Today I want to show you how to use the timeline, the tools that are available with the video timeline, not the frame timeline, just the video timeline. So, um, and to do that, what I'm, I'm just going to uh, create a little animation, uh, very simple, so that you, I'll, that way I will take you through the process of what you need to do to actually get started with animating something. Uh, so yes, we'll take it step by step. It's going to be uh, quite quick, quick and sweet. So uh, let's start by bringing up the window, the window for the timeline. So I'll do that. Here's my timeline. I'm going to snap that little timeline down here. Um, what else do I need? I need a layer, so I need to, f to create a new document. I'm going to go for something very basic. Here we go. Uh, so now I have one layer, but I still don't have a timeline. So here I need to click on this button to create the video timeline. So here we are. Uh, we have a video timeline. We have a video timeline with one layer. So uh, we'll need to create a video layer in order to uh, to animate. But first things first, before you start animating, you need to ask yourself um, the speed at which you will animate in terms of frames per second. Do you want to animate at 24 frames per second or, or 10 frames per second? Uh, by default, Photoshop creates a 30 frames per second uh, timeline. So that's a uh, that's a lot. <laughs> if you want to animate at that rate, that's a lot. Uh, if you can animate 12 frames per second, that that's pretty good already. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with 12 frames per second. So how do I change the the frame rate of my timeline? Um, you can't just click on that. That doesn't work. You need to go here on that little corner, and then you have a few more options. And here you have set timeline frame rate. So you click on that. As you can see by default, it's on uh, 30 frames per second. So you can type in here wh whichever number you want, or you can go and choose among these uh, standard frame rates. So I'm going to go and hit 12, 12 frames per second. That's what the FPS here stands for, frames per second. OK. Now, um, this is my timeline. <laughs> it's very short here. Uh, so I'd like to see a bit better what happens here. I'm going to zoom in and in, in order to zoom in and see a bit closer I'm going to use these tools, tools at the bottom. So this is the zoom in tool. I click on this and I zoom inside extends the length of my timeline. If I click on this other side it does the other way. Or you can grab this uh, indicator here and uh, s slide it along. So here we are. Here we are. We're a little closer now, um, it's all very well, but um, how many frames do I actually need for my animation? Um, by default here, it's creating something like, I don't know, actually, let's zoom in a bit more, something like 60 frames. So 60 frames, um, <coughs> it's too many. I'm go I, what I want really right now is maybe something like 10, 10 12 frames. So I'm going to reduce... Um, I'm going to search for where 16 frames, there you go. I'm going to go over 16 frames here. And I'm going to grab the end of this area and put it over here. So this area here covers 16 frames at 12 frames per second. Uh, this is my first layer. It extends all the way here. I don't need it to extend all the way here, so I can also grab the edge here and bring it here. So now everything is uh, 16 frames long. Uh, okay, so I'm happy. I'm, I'm working at 12 frames per second. I've got 16 frames to work with. Uh, now I need to actually have an animation layer. So to do that, I'm going to the Layer tab. Yeah, uh, drop down menu, Layer. And I'm going to go to Video Layers here. You see it says um, Sorry, if it steps out of the area here. It says new blank video layer here. So I'm going to click on that. What do I have? I have a new layer here. It's uh, blue. Uh, it's slightly different color. It has a little icon here that says, uh, specifies that it's a video layer. 
So um, <clears throat> I'm going to do to start by uh, doing something in my background in that layer. Uh, all I want to do is animate a little ball bouncing here. So I'm going to just draw a line for the ground. Let's say, oh, here we go. That's my ground. Uh, so if I scroll through the timeline, nothing happens, obviously. But because that layer is present all over here, I can see the line all over here. If I move this out, well, see, it disappears. But it appears here over this area, but it disappears here. So I'm going to bring it back here. There you go. And now I'm going to start drawing something on the anima animation layer. So I'm going to click the animation layer. I'm going to start by drawing a ball here on the animation layer. So here we go, I've got a little ball. I'm going to go to the next frame. Oh, to go to the next frame, scroll through the frames, I can just grab the indicator here. Or I can click on this button there to move one frame forward. and Or click on this one to move one frame backward. So I'm just going to go to the next frame. Now, what would be ideal is to actually see slightly the frame before uh, so that I can know where to draw my next frame. Uh, there is something called the onion skin, so that's uh, super handy for animators. So I'm gonna I'm, just, I'm gonna use that uh, onion skin. Uh, to use it, I'm gonna click here again. And you got two things here. You got or enable onion skins, or um, the onion skin settings. So I'm gonna start by enabling the onion skin. So here you go. You see now the frame that was drawn before appears, but it's slightly greyed out. It's because it's greyed out because it's not actually on my frame. So if I go back one frame, now it's it's full. If I go back go forward one frame, it appears slightly uh, faded. Now I can draw my uh, second frame. Let's say I'm going to go way up. It's going to go. It's going to go bouncing like this. So this is the ground floor going to go way up. I go here. Up. Next frame. Oops. I can still see this one. I'm going to go a bit closer. There we go. Next frame again. It's this time, just oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> not too good. Draw again. Say here like this. Uh, <clears throat> so we have a few frames already. So if I scroll, I can see, for example, here. If I stop, you can see the frame before and the frame after. So if you wanted to make some modifications, it's nice and easy to, to see what happens. Um, now, I'm going to remove the, the the onion skin. Remove them. There you go. And I would like to uh, save myself some time and not redraw the next frames of the ball going down. I'm going to just copy the frames that I have. So I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to go do a Control a to select the whole frame. Control C to copy. Then I move to the next frame, the next empty frame here, and I do a Control V to paste it. Oh, now this is not what exactly what I want. You see, the problem is that it pasted it right in the middle. Whereas what I wanted to it to be, it's exactly here where it is now, but it's copied it down here, and that's not right. Why is it that? Because that's the way Photoshop does. When you paste, it just pastes in the middle of where you're looking at. Um, I want, I, if you want it to be pasted exactly in the same place, and that's very important, you have to do not Control C, uh, sorry, not Control V for paste, but Control Shift V. So I'm gonna delete this first. Control A, uh, Control X. Um, I'm gonna go back to the frame I wanted. This one. Control A, copy. Control C. Now I go where I want to paste it. And then this time I do Control Shift V, and now the frame appears in the right place. So I'm happy now. Up it starts. So the start the ball starts going down again. I want to do the same thing. Copy another frame, this one, and put it there in the next frame. So I'm going to go here and do that again. Control A, Control C, select and copy. Then I go here and I go Control Shift V. And again for the very first frame, Control A, Control C, 
go down here, control shift V. And now we have our ball going up and down, up and down. So how many frames is that? Um, let's see. Um, that's eight frames, that's six frames basically. If I'm not mistaken, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven frames, sorry. Seven frames. Um, so if I wanted to play this and see what it looks like when I play it, I could just hit the play button. Now the play button plays at the beginning as you can see and I don't, I don't want to see the rest of the animation where nothing happens so I'm going to stop it and I'm going to move this end bit here and move it to the last frame so the very last frame is this one, I want to see it so I'm going to line it here and now if I hit play oh. so you see how it's sticky at the bottom the ball seems to stick so it sticks because it's twice the same frame so I, did, I shouldn't have really copied this one, so I'm going to remove it. And to remove it, I'll do Control A. Also, I could do Control A and Control X. But I want to show you something else. You can remove a frame by going here. You go to Layer, um, Video Layers, and you've got some uh, more options here. You've got Delete Frame or Duplicate Frame. These, or Insert a Blank Frame. These, these three tools are extremely important, extremely useful. The only problem is that they're, they're just difficult to get to. You need to click on Layer, and then you go down to Video Layers, and then you click on them. If only they were available right here somewhere, it would be a much, much easier to access them. So what I did is that I created my own um, uh, shortcuts. So if I go back here, you can see I've, I've used the function keys. F4 for new blank layer, F5 for insert a blank frame, F6 for to duplicate a frame, F7 to delete a frame. So I want to delete that frame, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click delete the frame. Oh, here we go, now this frame has disappeared. And I'm going to uh, shorten this area here. And then let's play it again, see what happens. This is better already. The, the pace is better. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, what could be nice is if the f the top frame, the ball at the top frame, kind of stayed a bit longer, slow down a bit more. So I'm, a good way to do that is to double the frame when it's right at the top. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to look at the frame that's right at the top. That's the one. And I'm going to duplicate this frame. Have it twice. Now, how do I do that? How do I insert a frame right here? And how do I make it twice the same? There's two ways to do that. Uh, again, you need to go back here to layer, uh, to video layers. You can insert blank frame. And in that case, it will just add a new frame exactly where my uh, indicator is, except the new frame, frame will be just empty. Or I can duplicate my frame, and it creates the same frame again. Insert a new frame, identical. So I'm going to duplicate here because I want twice the same. Click duplicate. So now those two frames here, see I'm scrolling here from left right to left. Uh, they are identical. So now I've got new frames. So I need to extend this again because I've got a new frame uh, in my account. So there we go. Now I play it. And now it's got a bit of pace now. You can see it kind of holds a little bit up there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, another thing that would be a fun would be to have um, a frame right at the bottom where the ball squeezes a little bit as if it were uh, as if it had some weight and its weight just forced it to squash at the bottom just for fun let's add that frame so what I'm going to do this now is um, use that first frame again control A control copy I'm going to paste it at the end control shift V and then, so you, so I've got an image where I've got the contact with the with the ground, and I add another frame. And I'm going to use my uh, onion skin again, enable onion skin. And there, I'm going to draw a f sort of flattened version of my ball, like this, as if it was squashing under its own weight and speed. Um, <clears throat> and now I'm going to. Uh, 
hide the onion skin again. There we go. As you can see, up oh, it just crashes and so let, let's pl let's play this and see what happens. Up oh, here we go. So now we have a squashy ball basically. So there you go. That's a that's a cute little animation. Uh, and we have seen a few of the tools uh, that I use, and this is it basically. Pretty much, this is it. This is how you can start animating. Um, <coughs> if you wanted to, let's say, color that ball quickly, you would create yet another a layer, layer, video layers, new blank video layer. So I'm going to call this one color. There you go. I'm going to put it underneath here. And I'm going to give that ball some color. So I'm going to pick a, a red. There we go. Just for the sake of it. And I'm going to fill in the ball. Just here. There we go. And the next one. There we go. And the next one. There we go. And again. And again. And again. You get the idea. Here we go. Let's play it. Oh, you can space. You can use the space bar to play. Uh, it's uh, easier to access. So I'm going to hit the space bar, and here we have it, bouncing red ball. So there you go. First, uh, next time I'm going to show you how to use the uh, the other timeline, the frame, the frame timeline. And we're going to do exactly the same thing with the frame timeline time line and see how different it is. Uh, <clears throat> so if you want to follow and not miss any of my videos, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. And like my video if you think uh, that was interesting. Please leave comments. Uh, let me know what you'd like me to, um, to cover, any subject or any questions you may have. I'll be happy to try and answer. All right. Thank you very much.